Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from beautiful downtown Iron Mountain, Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Now, I'm up here for clinics this weekend, and I didn't have anything to do tonight in my hotel room, so I thought I'd go ahead and review my comments from the week's videos. Now, I found some real doozies there, and it gave me an idea. Maybe I should start a new series for the channel called Sunday Morning Sillies, where I take the most absurd comments or videos that I run across during the week and just kind of go over them real quick with you. So let's go ahead and start the first episode of Sunday Sillies. Cue up the music and here we go. Well, guys, let's go ahead and start off with this comment by none other than Dr. John D., a flat earth scientist. Okay? Now, his big thing is that in the experiment with Blue Marble Science, what he did was he took an open ended tube, like so, he attached a line to it. And it hooked it up to a mammometer, which basically is a pressure gauge reader. And the bottom line is this. When he opened up the valve down here, there is a reference level in here. And what it would do is very much like a water level. It would read off the pressure at the same level in this open-ended pipe. He then filled... Filled the pipe with butane, which has more density, more mass per unit volume than, get, than air, and demonstrated that he could have a pressure that was higher than the outside air without containing the butane because it was in this open-ended pipe. Now, what Dr. John D. and several of the other flat earth scholars put out was that, well, it's contained within a pipe. Let's go see how he misunderstands this principle. Now, first of all, if we have a 55 gallon drum, which is open on the top, and we put that in a chamber that's airtight, and we make this a vacuum. Now, if we put gas under pressure in here, what happens to the gas? Well, it'll flow out the top into this sealed room until it equalizes somewhere between a vacuum and whatever the pressure in the 55 gallon container was. The pressure will equalize. Now again, we're holding things like temperature and volume constant here. We're only looking at gas pressure. Now, that 55 gallon drum is open on the top and it is in no way, shape or form containing that gas at a higher pressure within it. It's, the gas is freely able to go between the vacuum room and the pressure in the 55 gallon container. So this is the point that we're making. Now, what was the question to begin with? We have the Earth, a nice spherical Earth. And around it, there is an atmosphere. And on the outside of the atmosphere, there is the vacuum of space. Now the contention is, you cannot have gas pressure in an atmosphere next to the vacuum of space. So how do we test that in the laboratory? Okay, there's a couple of different ways that we can do. We can get on an airplane and we can measure the gas pressure on the surface of the earth and then we can go up 20,000 feet and see what the gas pressure is there. And we'll find that we have a pressure gradient. Okay, that's just one, one thing that we can, we can look at. 
But let's sit down and do something a little bit different. This is a little bit more of a thought exercise because what we want to do is we want to reproduce this in the laboratory or in somebody's garage or backyard as Blue and Marble Science did. Now, what happens if we build a wall all the way from the surface of the Earth to the vacuum of space at that position on the Earth? Will the pressure on either side of that wall, or even, even down here at the bottom, change in any way, shape, or form? No, it will not. How about we build two walls? Will the pressure on this side be any different than the pressure on that side? Assuming that we aren't taking any changes due to temperature or warming of the sun or any of the other things that you guys will try and come up with. We are simply talking about a mass that exerts gravity and the pressure on the atmosphere surrounding it. Okay? So, what happens instead of doing it here and here, we build that wall here and here. Is there any difference? Nope. How about instead we start moving them closer together and we end up with a long tube right here. Okay. Will there be a vacuum on one end of this tube and an atmosphere, a full atmosphere of pressure down at the bottom end of the tube? Perhaps. Here, we'll have a look again. Just, to, just so that you can see this very clearly. So, we'll, the, we'll have one atmosphere of pressure down here at the bottom, and we'll end up with a vacuum on the other end of the tube, if our theory is correct. So, how do we test this? Well, let's just have a look at the pipe. And this is a very, very long pipe. And it's sealed at the bottom, and it's open at the top and say that this pipe is 100 kilometers long. Now, if we're right, we can have a lower pressure or a vacuum up here, and we'll have full atmospheric pressure down here. And if you look at the pressure as it goes from here to here, the pressure will decrease but we don't want to build a 100-foot pipe, or a 100-kilometer pipe, do we? How about we build a smaller pipe? So let's do this. Let's take a pipe 20 feet long. All right. Now, as it sits there, that pipe will be filled with the same air that surrounds it at a certain pressure. All right. So, will the air pressure here on the outside be the same as the air pressure here on the inside? Yes, it will. Now, can we measure that? Sure we can. Now, recall that in our experimental setup, we had a small tube that was hooked up to a mammometer. Okay? And there was a reference level in the mammometer right here. And what it would do when we hook this up is it would, by the same principle that a water level works, it would measure the pressure in the tube at the same height as that reference level. And this is the same way, remember our... Uh, Remember our water level. If we filled this with water and it came up to here, it would also come up to here, and this line would be level. All right, so we'll get rid of that. Now this is the way that we can conduct an experiment. So the next thing that we have to worry about is how are we going to be able to demonstrate a change in 20 feet. Well, 
perhaps instead of filling this tube with air, let's fill it with something that's heavier. Now, in our case, what we did was we happened to fill it with butane, which is heavier than air. So what we did was we filled this all up, all the way to the very top, with butane. Now remember, it's still open right here on the top. And if there was high pressure in this tube, compared to the pressure on the outside, there is absolutely nothing stopping that gas from flowing from high pressure to low pressure. Now, here's what happened. When we filled up the tube with butane, the pressure right here at the very top was one atmosphere. And as a result, the one atmosphere of the air and the one atmosphere of the butane was equal. However, as we went down the tube and more and more of the butane was above the level of the sensor, the mass of this butane was pulled on by gravity, which is a downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And as a result, the pressure down at that level, here we'll Let's go ahead and put that in green so you can see it. The pressure down here was higher than the pressure up there. There was actually a pressure gradient set up. Now, let's go ahead and expand this further. And we demonstrated that in the test with a 20-foot pipe. It was very easy to demonstrate. Now, here is the significance of this experiment. If we can demonstrate a pressure gradient in a 20-foot pipe going from one atmosphere to greater than one atmosphere in only 20 feet. We can demonstrate a couple of things. First of all, we can have a higher pressure next to a lower pressure as long as there is a pressure gradient and an outside force acting on this pipe. And that outside force, of course, is the 9.8 meters per second squared downward acceleration of gravity. Now, how low do we have to make the pressure at the open end of that pipe to validate our hypothesis that gas pressure can exist next to a vacuum? Do we have to drive this down to one half an atmosphere by making this pipe longer? Can we do that? Of course we can. All right. What we would have to do is we would have to perhaps put this in a, uh, in a vacuum chamber and start pumping out the air until we got to half, of, half an atmosphere and we had to see how long of a pipe we would have to make until this end of the pipe only had half an atmosphere of pressure in it. Okay, that's one way that we could do it. But do we really need to? No, we really don't. All we have to do is that we have to be able to demonstrate that we can establish a pressure gradient on a small scale. We can take that and extrapolate it into a larger scale and continue the decrease in pressure all the way down to zero. Now, another thing that we could do is we could take a heavier gas and that would shorten the amount of pipe that we would need to reach, say, half an atmosphere. Okay. And Again, that's no problem. All you have to do is just enclose this whole thing in a vacuum chamber, drop it down to half an atmosphere, and see how long of a pipe we need with a heavier gas to have it equalize at this end right here. And it will eventually. 
Now, could we do it in a bigger vacuum chamber and get it down to a quarter atmosphere? Sure we could, but how far do we really have to go? Do we have to drive it all the way to zero? No, we simply don't. All we have to do is show that we can do it to some extent on a small scale and then just show that that can continue as we did. Remember, with our butane experiment, we checked three feet, we checked a pipe 10 feet, and then we checked a pipe that was 20 feet long. So we demonstrated that we could continue doing this indefinitely and the pressure gradient would continue to build the longer the pipe was. And eventually we'd get to a point where we had zero on one end and we'd have a pressure on the other end. So really that's all there is to this experiment. Now we have to ask ourselves, how does this answer the original question? Recall that we wanted to know if the Earth was here and it had an atmosphere around it and that was surrounded by the vacuum of space, how can that happen? We've demonstrated that gravity will create a pressure gradient with butane over a relatively small scale. The pressure at the top of this column of butane will be less than the pressure at the bottom. The question becomes is instead of a tube, what if we used a great big tank? say a kilometer or more long, and we hooked them up at the bottom and we filled them both up with butane. Now, would the pressure at this point in the tube be exactly the same as the pressure at the same point in the tank, the great big open-ended tank? Of course it would. Do we need to have a tank? No. The only reason that we're using you know, enclosing it to some extent is to make it small so that we can work with it. But theoretically, so there's the surface of the earth. If we fill the surface of the earth up with butane, it, the pressure is going to be higher down here than it will be up there. Eventually, as we bring these, as we put more and more butane around the earth, the pressure is going to get to a point where it is zero and everything beyond that will be a vacuum. But even though this pressure is zero, this pressure is a full atmosphere pressure down here. So what we've done with a 20 foot tube is shown how this pressure gradient will decrease and decrease with length to the point that we can get it down to zero and as a result of that there's no problem with it being next to the zero pressure of space and the thing that makes that possible is this constant downward acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared creating that pressure gradient. And we demonstrated that that does create a pressure gradient with a 20-foot tube in Harry's backyard. So that's really all there is to this experiment. Now, you're fixating on the pipe because you're trying to find some way to disregard the science here. And that comes from two different things. Number one, people like Dr. John D. simply don't understand the science. And two, you are so heavily invested into the flat earth that you cannot accept evidence that shows of a, an atmosphere can exist next to a vacuum due to gravity on a spherical earth. All right? I'm sorry that you can't wrap your head around that, but that does not make it wrong. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from northern Michigan. Stay in school, people. Oh